I'm Pastor Candy Christmas of Regeneration Nashville, and I'm so excited to have this time with you today. I hope that you're having a blessed week and you feel the presence of the Lord uh, surrounding you today. I have a thought on my heart uh, about delay. Just one word, delay. God has been dealing with me about delay. Uh, I'm standing in prayer and agreement with so many people who are waiting on their miracle and uh, just can't understand the delay. Why the delay? So today I just want to talk with you about delay, but I have a word of the Lord for somebody and it is this. I feel it in my spirit. Delay does not mean denial. God's word is true. His promises are true. He's going to come through and your miracle is on the way. God is not a man that he could lie, nor the son of man that he can change his mind. In him, there is no variableness. There is no shadow of turning. He's not fickle today. What he said, he meant, and what he said, he will do. He will perform it. So I just had that word today for somebody. Delay does not mean denial. Your miracle is on the way. So I just want to talk to you from a biblical standpoint today of delay. And I'll start with 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 18. And, you know, really this isn't my text, but I found it. I thought you might enjoy this one verse. 1 Thessalonians 2, 18. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul. So this is Paul speaking. He said once again, but Satan has hindered us. So Paul was wanting to go and preach in person to the Thessalonians, to the church of Thessalonica, but the devil hindered him and kept him from his purpose. So I just want to just read to you very quickly the definition of delay. I think we all know what delay means because, because we've lived delay. But the Thayer lexicon says to cut into, to impede one's course by cutting off his way or to hinder. So think of it. You're, you're going down the journey of life and you're headed to your destiny and to your purpose. And the devil sees what you are going to do against the kingdom of darkness. The devil sees the hand of God on your life. And so you're just going along, not really even possibly understanding all the depth, all the brevity of how God is going to use you. And you're just seeking God and you're living right and you're praying every day. But the devil sees that the hand of the Lord is lifting you. So what does he do? You're on this journey. And so he just wants to cut you off at the pass. He wants to impede your journey to your destiny. Um, the other word for layer, uh, Thayer lexicon is the word hinder. He wants to hinder you from getting to your purpose. The Strong's uh, definition to impede, detain, hinder, to be tedious unto. You ever done something tedious and, and you're paying very, very close attention? Maybe you've got it close up to your eyes and, and very close attention to this tedious work that you're doing, maybe needlepoint or I don't know what, uh, working in a machine shop. That is what the enemy is doing. He's tedious unto you to hinder what God wants to do in you and through you in your life. So I just want to um, uh, start with Genesis chapter 40 and speak about the life of Joseph. Joseph was one of the most glorious men of the Old Testament. Sometimes if I'm just sitting on a plane or uh, and, I'm, and I'm just wanting recreational reading, maybe I've gotten all my chapters in for the day, but I just want something wonderful to read, then I'll read the life of Joseph. I also like uh, reading the book of Ruth and I love to read uh, about the, the life of Esther. But Joseph is one of the most wonderful books in the Bible because he was such a man of integrity, just such a, just an unusual uh, spirit this man has. And so I, I love to read about Job. So when Job is a young man, he's 17, 
And his brethren are so jealous of him, the Bible says that they can't even be civil to him. But his dad favors him. His dad loves him and makes him a coat of many colors. And the more his dad favors him, then the more his brothers hate him. So finally, they want to do him harm. They want to kill him, and they decide to throw him in a pit. Then they see a caravan coming along, going to Egypt, and they stop them and sell him into slavery. So his destiny seemingly is out of his hands. His destiny, it looks like, is spiraling out of control. You ever feel that way? Lord, so many things have happened in my life and, and, and my destiny is out of my control. It's out of my hands. Let me tell you something. God is not surprised about anything. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called unto his purpose. So God is still in control. The hand of God is on Joseph's life and he winds up in Egypt. The Bible says that wherever he goes, God is with him and God blesses him and gives him favor. He finds himself working in Potiphar's house. And the Bible says that Joseph was a goodly man meaning he was very handsome. If you look it up in the, in the Strong's Concordance, the definition of that, he's very, very handsome. And Josephus actually records that Joseph had such beauty as a human being that when Potiphar's wife held a feast in Egypt for, for all these women, that they, that they lauded all together, they lauded the beauty of Joseph, but nevertheless, he was a man of integrity. So Potiphar's wife saw Joseph and wanted him to lie with her. And he said, I cannot do it. So I'm just setting up the story so that you'll know where we are. Joseph said, I can't do it. My, my master doesn't even know all that he has except what he puts in his hand to eat. He has, he has given me everything uh, to steward in his house but you. And I can't sin against my master. I can't sin against the Lord. So this Potiphar's wife, falsely accusing, takes his coat, and Joseph is thrown in prison because she has the evidence. He, he tried to lie with me, and I took his coat as he ran. So here we are, Joseph is in prison. And the Bible says, I, I marvel when I read this, because here he is in prison again. I believe it is Psalms 105 that talks about uh, the, the fetters on his ankles hurt his feet. And he's in, he's in prison. And the Bible says, the Lord was with him. And the Lord blessed him and prospered him. Here, Joseph, wherever he was, God blessed him. Can I tell you that where you are in life, anywhere you are, as long as you have the presence of the Lord and you are in right standing with him, God is going to bless you right where you are and lift you up. He, he just is because that's what he does when he loves his servants. So Joseph is in the prison, and uh, the master of the prison has, has given everything into Joseph's hands. So this is where we catch, uh, where, where we start in with the story in Genesis chapter 40. We'll just start with verse 1. And after, uh, it came to pass that after these things, that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with him. Look at this. Here he is. He is a slave and he is in prison and he is he is in charge of two officers. Now, isn't that the hand of God? And, and so he said, and he served them. So they were in his custody for a while. Verse five, then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream. Both of them, each man's dream in one night, and each man 
uh, man's dream with its own interpretation. And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. So here are these officers and they're in prison and the same night they have a dream. And Joseph comes in and they're sad. They're crestfallen. They're moping around and Joseph's like, you know, what has happened since yesterday when I saw you? And they said, we both had a dream. So the cupbearer, uh, the chief butler, he had a dream of a vine. And the vine had three branches. And in, in those branches were luscious fruit and grape, grapes. And he took those grapes and he squeezed it in the hand of Pharaoh. And Joseph said, well, your interpretation is wonderful because the three vines is three days. And in three days, Pharaoh is going to lift you out of this prison. And he said, but remember me when you go into Pharaoh because I'm falsely accused. I've done nothing to be here in this prison. And the baker thought, well, okay, that was good. <laughs> I, I'm going to give my dream. And he dreamed about three baskets of bread on his head and the birds came and ate the bread. And Joseph said, oh no. In three days, Pharaoh is going to hang you and the very birds will eat the flesh off of your bones. So both dreams and both interpretations came to pass. So God uh, raised Joseph up in the eyes of these men to know that he was of God and that the hand of God was on him. So sure enough, the butler goes back and he's the cup bearer and he's enjoying life with Pharaoh and he forgot Joseph for two whole years. For two whole years, Joseph is still in the prison. His ankles are still in fetters. He's still in the dungeon. And the cupbearer is back with Pharaoh. He's complete. You talk about delay. Don't you know? Don't you know that Joseph was, was disheartened? Don't you know that he was discouraged? But I just want to, I want to read this to you because I believe that in that two-year span of waiting, see, we're talking about delay. In the two years of delay, something wonderful happened in Joseph's heart and in his spirit. I just want to read to you what the book of James says uh, happens here. Uh, James chapter 1, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temp temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So in the delay, allow God to work patience. Don't allow the enemy to let you, to, to pull you out of your peace, to pull you out of the refuge of your peace. See, the word of God says the peace of God shall guard your heart and mind. And so the peace of God is surrounding you even in the delay. And you think, man, I'm missing my calling. I'm missing what God has for me. But can I tell you that God can even work in the delay, because he said this, then let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So in the delay, patience is having its perfect work in us as believers. And God is doing a work in our heart, in your heart. I remember uh, my husband he used to say something that, that really irritated me. He said, uh, God has uh, raised us up for a solution to a problem that has not even happened yet. And boy, that used to aggravate me. After church, you know, I, I would, uh, you know, try to figure out just the right way to say it so I wouldn't hurt his feelings. But I'd say, you know, I really wish you wouldn't say that because it makes us sound like we're not even relevant. He said, I can't help it. He said, I feel it in the spirit that God is raising us up. And sure enough, during that two year, uh, sorry, in 2020, in that year of pandemic, when everything was shut down, 
then God raised my hus husband up and he became a solution, a prophetic solution to a problem as of yet had never been. Nobody had ever heard of a pandemic before. And so Joseph is being groomed. Patience is having his perfect work. And all of a sudden, there is a problem that is arising. And so you could think, well, it's, it's that Pharaoh has a dream and that Joseph can interpret dreams, and that is the problem. See, the problem was greater than that. Here was the problem that was arising. Famine was on the way, and God needed a deliverer for the Hebrews to come and live in Goshen, a place of safety. So sure enough, Pharaoh has this dream, and the, the butler, all of a sudden, he realizes, he said, I've, I realize my fault now. He said, there was a Hebrew man in that prison that can interpret dreams. And he interpreted my dream and the baker's dream. And he asked me to remember him. And I have forgotten him. This two-year delay. And he said, now I realize my fault. And they called Joseph out of the prison. He interpreted the dream and said, famine is on the way. So just look at the process in Joseph's life. Patience having its perfect work, that you're lacking nothing. Because by the time that Joseph has been released out of the prison, something, has, something glorious has transpired in his heart and in his mind. I wonder about Potiphar's wife the one who lied on him, the one who falsely accused him, the reason he was thrown in that prison. I wonder if she was somewhere hiding in her palace, shaking in her shoes, wondering if Joseph is going to have me killed because now he's second in command only to Pharaoh. And when Joseph's brothers showed up, and they didn't know him. He could have killed them. He could have, he could have retaliated. But no, patience had its perfect work. Man, I just, I just want to tell you, in the waiting, in the delay, allow the Lord to do such a work in your life and make you a sign and a wonder in the earth. That is what God is doing. He is wanting to display his glory in the earth, and he has a people that are waiting in the shadows, a no-name people, people who aren't really famous, maybe just one-talent people, people that have never stood in a pulpit before, but God is raising them up, us up, for such a time as this. So, I just want to read to you Joseph's frame of mind now that he's gone through the process after he has been faithful in the delay. Genesis 45 and 5, he speaks to his brethren and he's uncovered himself to his brethren and this is what he says. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. He said, for God sent me before you to preserve life. See, God, when, when Joseph was 17 years old, God saw a famine in the future. All of this preparation in his life was to save the Hebrew children, the Hebrew people. Again, in Genesis 50 and 20, he said, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. See, God can work even in the delay. I know so many people right now that are praying for prodigals. I'm standing in agreement with some wonderful families that are just sold out and on fire for God who have children that are lost. You say, God, why the delay? Why the delay? Well, I believe that is like Paul said, Satan has hindered. So we have to go to war in prayer. I know people that are wanting to sell property. I know people that are looking for a mate. And you're saying, God, why the delay? 
Can I tell you this? It's going to make sense. It is going to, when you meet that mate, when you meet that person that God has for you and see what was going on in their lives, I can tell you it's all going to make sense. And I believe that God is going to work this out for your good. I thank God for, for quickly answered prayers. Man, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just pray and, and all of a sudden someone's healed. We pray in the name of Jesus and there's an instantaneous miracle or we get a call and tomorrow we go into work and there's a promotion. But sometimes there is a delay. And I'm going to say it again. Delay does not mean denial. Your answer is on the way. What things soever you desire, believing when you pray, those things you shall have. So God worked his purpose in Joseph. You know, in the book of Daniel in uh, chapter 10, we just get a little peek behind the curtain into the spirit. See, you and I, we're praying and, and we're fasting and we're believing and declaring and speaking life to our situation. And a year passes, two years passes, time goes by and you think, God, are you even hearing me? But Daniel gives us a little peek inside of the spirit. The curtain is pulled back and we get to see what happens in the spirit. And I just want to read this to you. Uh, in Daniel 10.10, 10, uh, says, And behold, a hand touched me, this is Daniel speaking, and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said, Daniel, O man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. So this is Gabriel, the archangel, that is speaking to Daniel. And when you have had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. And he said to me, fear not, Daniel, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and you humbled yourself before God, your words have been heard. You know, I had a young man email me day before yesterday and, uh, and he will call or text or email. Uh, he's been in our church since he was a little, little boy. And he, he texted me and he said, will you pray for me? And I said, yes, I will pray for you. He does, he does this very often. But I just felt a leaping in my spirit. And I said, but you need to pray. I will pray for you. But you need to take your relationship with God seriously. And it, and it will mean more if you pray and pour your heart out and your problems out to God. You know what he said? He, he, we were, it was Messenger Facebook. And he said, I just feel like that it's a one-way conversation, that God doesn't even hear me, that I'm just speaking out into oblivion. Can I tell you, friends, that is a lie that the devil wants us to believe, that we're just speaking out into nothingness and nobody hears us and God doesn't hear. But right here, this is what Gabriel said. He said, uh, your words have been heard. And I have, be, I have come because of your words. He said, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. So he's fasting and praying, and there is a delay of 21 days, and now we see why. Because the prince of Persia, demon spirits, as Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 2.18, the devil hindered me. So we just got to keep praying and believing and pleading the, the blood and binding demon spirits. And he said, uh, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me for I was left there with the kings of Persia. And to come to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days for the vision is for the days yet to come. So I believe that when we're praying and believing, we can go in our prayer closet and we can cry out to God and we can come out of our prayer closet and our heart is lifted and, and the, the sun seems brighter, things seem better, but nothing's changed. Our prodigal still hasn't come home. 
We still have the same amount of money in our bank account. Whatever, whatever it is, the property still hasn't sold. But something happened in the Holy Ghost. Something happened in the Spirit. And there is a war going on in the heavens for you and for me when, they, when we pray. God has heard our words because of our words in prayer. They've not fallen on deaf ears. The Bible says that his, uh, God's ear is not deaf and his arm is not short but that he can reach in our situation. I just want to read you this to encourage you a little bit. Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 says, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, for he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So there's a time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. The vision, what vision? The vision that you have for your life and for your ministry and for your purpose and your destiny. There is a vision that you have that God is bringing to pass. And he says this, he said, wait for it, for it will not tarry. It will surely Come, your answer is on the way. And I love this, uh, Luke 18, verse seven. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bear long? One translation says, though he tarries long. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? It says, he will avenge them speedily. See, God has, has allowed the waiting. God has allowed the tarrying. God has allowed the delay. But when he comes, he will come speedily to avenge his own elect. And I just want to read to you what this word avenge means. It means revenging. It means vengeance and punishment on who? The enemy that tried to impede, that tried to head you off on your journey to your destiny and your ministry and to the things that God has, the good things that God has for you. He's going to bring vengeance. On, and I just believe this. I, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Somebody that's watching me. Your answer is going to come speedily. It's going to, though the answer has tarried when it happens, get all your ducks in a row, get all your paperwork done, whatever it is, get your house in order because it's going to happen quickly. It's, it's going to happen quickly. So he says he's bringing vengeance on the devil. I just, I just want to warn you before we close, I just want to give you a quick little warning. Sometimes we impede our own miracle, our own blessing, and our own destiny with our tongue, with the words that we speak, and speaking death. Well, I knew this wasn't going to happen. If something bad's going to happen, it's going to happen to me. Well, I, I, just knew, I just knew this wasn't going to work out. And we speak death. We speak death to our miracle. And I just want to remind you that the greatest snare to the Israelite people when they were in the wilderness was murmuring and complaining. And they impeded, they delayed going into their promise. What should have taken four years, a four-year journey from Egypt to Canaan, took them 40 years and many of them did not make it. Even Moses himself wasn't able to go into his promise. Because of the words, the murmuring and complaining that they did, they hindered and impeded. So I just want to give you a, a, just a warning. I don't want to end on a, on a bad note. But I do want to warn you that the words that come out of your mouth are so important to speak life. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And so, yes, we're fighting the enemy that's delaying our promise, that's delaying our miracle, but we don't want to stand in the way 
of what God is doing by speaking death to our miracle. So as I was studying and, and, and praying over this message today, I know that God gave me this message for somebody that is watching. You've waited and you've prayed and the delay has come. But you know, there is a, there's a song, there's a worship song out. I wish I could sing it. I tried to sing it uh, before I started this podcast, but it doesn't really sound the same without the music and the chord progression. But I'll read you the words and it says, in the waiting, you get the glory. In the breakthrough, you give the glory. God is faithful in the waiting and he's faithful in the breakthrough and God gets the glory. Today, I just wanna pray for you. I just, I want us to come into agreement for your miracle. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we take authority over every demonic force, every assignment sent against the people of God to delay our miracle, to delay our promise, to delay our prodigal coming in, in Jesus' name. Lord, we call to the north, the south, and the east, and the west to our prodigal, and we take authority over every demonic delay, in Jesus' name. God, we call property soul. God, we call uh we call mates in. God, we call life to dead wombs, people who are believing to give birth to children. God, we, we just speak life, oh God, to finances. God, to promotions in the name of Jesus, and we bind every delay. But Father, I pray over the people of God who are waiting on their promise. God, that you would give them strength and supernatural grace. God, that we would not walk out of our peace today, but God, you get the glory in the waiting. And Lord, you get the glory in the breakthrough. Lord, we declare it, we decree it in the name of Jesus. You know, I don't think I told you that I love you, but I do. I hope you have just a wonderful week and you feel the presence of the Lord and I'll see you right here next time. God bless you.